hello guys you're welcome back to my channel if you are new here thank you so much for joining in my name is Ebziba, and if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much for coming back again i really appreciate your love and your loyalty and i do not take this for granted at all thank you and if you're a returning viewer who have not subscribed to this channel why what is going on <laughs> what are you still waiting for so guys um today i'll be talking about you know pregnancy for those that are new here, I create content on marriage, motherhood, and motherhood is everything from pregnancy till having the baby and continues that way. So let's get into today's topic. Today I'm talking about second trimester essential. That is everything that they will not tell you that you need. I'm going to be letting it all out today without holding back a word. As far as I know, you know, you can get um, more information from other resources. But as far as I know and everything that worked for me, I'll be talking about it today. So second trimester is just the period between the 13th week of pregnancy till the 27th week of pregnancy. So I'll be, you know, speaking within that space for today. Let me first congratulate you if you are pregnant and you are watching this video <laughs> for surviving all those first trimester. Voila. Trust me, I know it was a huge struggle. I know it was a lot of work dealing with the nausea, dealing with the vomiting, dealing with the loss of appetite, dealing with the fatigue, dealing with insomnia sleeplessness it is a lot to handle and um, i'm glad you were able to sail through and progress into the second trimester so now that you're in the second trimester there's a general belief that the second trimester is the time to enjoy yeah that's true to some extent but for some people they still you know go through some challenges in their second trimester that can require medical intervention but if you are lucky enough to you know have a peaceful smooth second trimester congratulations but there are some things that being you should not be too comfortable with you're not supposed to be too comfortable with your second trimester that you get to forget or neglect all of these things that i would be talking about today so the first thing i'm going to you know address is your hospital appointments Hospital appointments is very, very important. That is the antenatal care visit. Antenatal care visit is very, very important. Make sure you don't miss out on any of this because this is like a critical time in your life and you need as much attention and as much examination medically as you can get. So please do not take light of your hospital appointments. And having said that, there are some things that are very, very important for you to start up with in this second trimester. Research has shown that majority of pregnant women comes down with malaria. And malaria is one of the leading cause of death in pregnant women in Nigeria. So, to avoid any unwanted stories, stories that touch, it's just better you start treating malaria in pregnancy. And there's a particular medication that, you know, pregnant women can use to do, treat this in pregnancy. Sorry about that. <laughs> Please take note that you cannot use every or any type of malaria medicine as a pregnant woman. So I just advise that you consult with your physician or your midwife or the ups and gain so that they can tell you the proper medication. It is not my right to tell on this channel. So disclaimer, <laughs> I am not your consultant and I am not your doctor. I am just helping to put out information and, you know, giving reminder just in case you visit a healthcare facility where they have very busy schedule and they could, you know, forget some little details. So I'm here to just remind and, you know, tell you what you need to know so that when you visit the hospital, you can know what to um, ask or what to say to your healthcare provider. So, Talk to your healthcare provider about malaria in pregnancy, how to treat or how to prevent malaria in pregnancy. So by the time you eat 20 weeks, which is within the second trimester, you start your first dose of um, malaria prophylaxis medicine. 
and um, a month after you can take another one and by the time you are in your third trimester you can take the last dose you're supposed to take three doses in pregnancy so it works that way then another thing you should also talk to your healthcare provider about while going for or when you're on visit to the hospital is vaccination um because of so many exposures to toxins and so many unwanted or polluted substances around the environment it's just better you take some vaccines or you get immunized against some particular toxic organisms example is tetanus so it is important that pregnant women are given tetanus toxoid vaccine in pregnancy and this is often you know started with in their second trimester so this is also one of the things you should take note of or you should talk to your physician or your healthcare provider about when they plan to start this immunization or this vaccination for you how long you are going to take it if you are a first time mom and you've never had um you've never been given tetanus toxoid vaccine then you have to start fresh so you take the first dose then a month later you take the second dose a year after you take the third dose the, another year after you take the fourth dose then another year the fifth dose they're supposed to take five doses of um tetanus toxoid vaccine but you start then one month then subsequently it's going to be a year apart from each other i hope you understand that and short so you know talk to your healthcare provider about this then they know the right thing to do and um, how you should take the medi um, the vaccination this is the second trimester your bump is beginning to grow like every <laughs> every hidden secret is coming out to the open people are beginning to know that you are get you are pregnant your bump is growing your baby is developing and um, it is very very essential that at this stage you take care of the skin around your belly and what do i mean or what am i trying to you know talk about it's a stretch mark successfully i was able to you know overcome that stretch mark business to a great extent although i still had some stretch marks on my laps but majorly on my belly i do not have the stretch marks that is all over the place some have said that it is um due to genetics that genetics help aside from that there were some things i did that i think they worked for me and i want to share just in case you try it may work for you and um the first thing i i did was i had the concussion i'm sorry i don't have it yeah like it's finished but i'll just describe what i combined together and um, how i used it so i had the concussion i used i got shea butter um coconut oil and almond oil initially i just used um shea butter and um, coconut oil i mixed this together and um, every morning after my after having my bath once i moisturize my body with my regular body lotion then when it comes to my tummy i just you know pick that concussion just a little scoop a little of it with my finger onto my palm rub it together and um, go through my bump from the back initially what i just do is i just rubbed the bump but i was not concentrating on my you know back side so the back side somewhere here i don't know if you can see somewhere here and then here just above my butt i was neglecting it but i just realized when i checked the mirror that stretch marks had started you know appearing there so i had to shift my focus towards that place and um, i just rubbed my bone then backwards and downwards and that was it that was working for me in all my um curiosity i just was reading about it and i saw that almond oil also helps with stretch mark in pregnancy so i added almond oil to my mixture and i will counsel or advise that if you are using coconut oil please try to you know do this extract this oil from coconut yourself if you don't know a valid or a legit person that can you know give you a pure coconut oil that is not mixed or adulterated for me i could not go through the stress so I made use of We Naturals coconut oil because I use I use this for my hair when I was still growing my hair before I cut it. 
so i just collected a little quantity from there mixed with cherry butter and some almond oil and it it worked perfectly for me so you can try this out i hope it also helps you as well after i had my baby i later read that there's a parma um shea butter for stretch marks i'll look for the picture and if i find i will you know insert it somewhere here it also helps with um stretch marks some said it did not it did not work for them and some people said it worked for them so i don't know i don't know which works or which will work for you but if you want to try it out or if you want to see whether it will work for you you may check on jumia it's just five thousand naira on jumia so you may want to try that out if you don't want to use my concussion formula and for my concussion formula i did ratio one to one to one so everything was just in the same proportion none was more or higher than the other then another thing that i feel is very very important in um second trimester of pregnancy is you have to sleep <laughs> this is like the time in pregnancy where you can you know enjoy and um, wear beautiful outfits so you have to sleep so i'll cancel that you get maternity gene i will insert a picture somewhere here or here whichever so i'll insert a picture of what i'm talking about and myself wearing all this gene i wore gene till the 30 no, till the 40th week of my pregnancy, I was wearing jeans. And um, most people just wonder how I do this. But they don't know that it is. <laughs> it was maternity jeans that was, you know, helping me and um, giving me the chance to sleep. So, so that I can still look pink and um, beautiful while pregnant. <laughs> Get this jeans. It's very, very good. Then legging too. Legging too will also help and make life easy for you. It's like very perfect if you are pregnant it works perfectly for you then another thing i want to talk about in the second trimester of pregnancy is care of your breast it is very very important for you to take good care of your breast especially the nipples i think for me the way it's worked for me from the second trimester of my pregnancy i started treating myself like i started taking care of my breast and what i just do is i get into the shower once I finish taking my bath, I know my hands are clean, so I make I make um something like this with my hands, put it on my nipple and just you know pull out my nipple. I do the same for the second breast and I just pull out both nipples. If your husband is around, for me my husband was not around, so he was not there to do the job. But if you live together with your husband under the same roof, please let him also do the job. You understand? Let him get to work and um do the job with his mouth <laughs> that's being said so if that won't work for you if you i don't know i don't know what works for you but if you prefer to you know do this yourself just pull out your nipples do that every morning after taking your bath then to remove any clogged dirt on the nipple get a clean cotton wool put it in oil olive oil could work if you have a tone and if you don't have you can also use um coconut oil as well it would work well just use it to clean the surface of the nipple to get rid of any clogged dirt or whatsoever might be there so that you can prepare yourself i was i was glad i did this because immediately my baby was out within 30 minutes i was able to breastfeed and it lashed and see it was very very easy in fact let me not say that um it was after delivery sometimes before then from the 34th week of my pregnancy wow. if memory serves me right i was already lactating not like it was so excess but if i apply any um, pressure on my nipple some milk comes out so i knew that oh it worked and it was effective so by the time i had my baby i was able to you know lactate within 30 minutes of pregnancy and I was able to you know demystify the fact that oh people don't lactate immediately after they have their baby and i'm glad i did because <laughs> my baby don't get to take formula at all which which was something i was looking forward to so you could try this and i'm sure that it will definitely work for you just try to you know put it at the back of your mind and be cautious about it so that every morning once you finish from the bathroom you can always do that then another thing i'll talk about is kegel exercises 
See, while I was pregnant, I was very, very curious. The reason is because, one, I was a first-time mom. Two, I did not have an elder sister. Three, my mom is late. So, I was as good as clueless. And... I don't have that culture of talking or asking questions or I just don't know how to do it. Not like I try to be secretive or something, but I don't know how to do it. Except you move closer to me and you ask me questions, then I feel free and comfortable enough to, you know, open up and speak. But if not, I don't ever like get to that point where I just sit down, call you and start talking this, this and that. It's not my thing. I don't know how to do that. So because of that, I was clueless and um, I had to read wide and extensively. And I saw mothers like mothers who had been in this business sharing their experiences of how they uh, get to, you know, pee. Like, how do I describe this? They were leaking. Like, urine was leaking. No, I, I, I think I'm not describing it well. But from the things I read and the things I come in contact with, I think they described it as even if they were laughing, urine gets to leak out. And then when I studied for that, I realized that this was as a result of the muscles around the um, urinary tract that has gotten so relaxed and then they did not get back to how they used to be before delivery and i realized that most of the women that shared these experiences were those that had spontaneous vaginal delivery so they had this challenge afterwards and then um, i think it was on twitter i was reading where one woman was sharing, sharing an ex her experience that even after her third child five years like she's had a third child for over five years and she still leak urine yeah yeah, that's true. That she still leaks urine. And um, I don't I don't know how, but I do not want this to happen to me. So I had to look for, you know, things I could do to, you know, prevent this from happening. And I came to realize that Kegel exercise actually helps. So I started doing Kegel exercise from the 10th week of my pregnancy. And I was able to, you know, maintain this till the end of my pregnancy. And it's really, really worked. Like, it's really, really worked. Because I never leaked urine up till now. I've never leaked urine. I laugh hysterically. I do a lot of whatsoever you can think. Sneezing, coughing, whatsoever. And I don't get to leak urine. And I think it, re it really helped my sexual life after delivery. Because I, I had to ask my husband. I've had so many myths and um, stories of, oh, if you had your baby through vaginal delivery, down there gets to slack and all of that. And I asked my husband if he ever experienced any slackness or whatsoever. <laughs> and he said, no, that is still as good as ever. So I think it's, it also helped with that. So you may want to try that. If you don't know how to do Kegel exercise, just, you know, check Google. <laughs> I don't know. I cannot start describing it here. But you can check Google for the best experience. Or so you watch YouTube videos. I, I checked online and i watched youtube videos to you know do all of this and I, I had been doing kegel exercise before i got pregnant actually but after i got pregnant i relaxed until i came in contact with that story that was when i actually resumed back and um, i keep up with it even till now i still keep up, keep up with it and i think it has really been helping my pelvic muscles yes the pelvic floor muscles are straightening up and um it's been working well for me and I'm sure it will work for you too. So you, you may want to try it out. Now that you're in your second trimester of pregnancy, I would advise that you take as much water as you can. In fact, if you are pregnant, I think the estimated quantity of water you should take is about 10 cups of water if you are pregnant. So try to, you know, beat this. I could take 14 cups of water in a day. And I go to toilet as much. Like my kidney was very, very active. And I think I loved it. Now that I've had my baby, I've relaxed. I take six to eight glasses of water, which I think is not so bad. But if you could keep, keep up with it after your delivery or after delivery, please do. Do not hesitate. But I will advise and counsel that you take as much water as you can tolerate in the second trimester of your pregnancy. It will just keep you active, it will keep you hydrated, it will keep you moisturized and also help with that stretch mark thing. 
because your body will be well moisturized and there will be no reason for dryness and any feeling of itch at all so guys that's it for today if there's any other thing i remember that worked for me that i did or that i used i'll leave them in the comment section and if there's another thing that you feel you want me to talk about please let me know your thoughts in the comment section and if you're an experienced mother or if you yeah an experienced mother and you feel that there are some other things that you used in your second trimester that i did not talk about please let me know in the comment section below guys i hope you enjoyed this video let me know if you enjoyed the video by clicking that like button give this video a thumbs up show me love it takes a lot to you know sit in front of camera and um do all of this please encourage me hit that red subscribe button if you have not and do well to share this video with your family, with your friends, with your sisters, and everybody around you. Thank you so much. I appreciate because I know you will do that. <laughs> so guys, I'll see you in my next video. Till then, stay safe and stay blessed. Bye.